In this video, we'll talk about Kramer's rule. Kramer's rule is a rule that uses matrices and determinants to figure out solutions to systems of equations. So I'm going to run through what Kramer's rule is and how we get it, because it looks like a weird rule unless you understand the background of it. So suppose I start with this. I've got a system that goes A11x1 plus A12x2 equals B sub 1. And I've got a 21x1, a 22, not one I would dance with, but a 22x2, and on this side, a b sub 2. I would like to solve this system. Now, what's the very basic way you know to solve the system? Take a multiple of one row by another. So I'm going to multiply this top row by negative a sub 2, 2, and I'm going to multiply the bottom row by a sub 1, 2. My goal is to eliminate x sub 2. All right, it's going to get messier before it gets better. When I do that, what's on the top? The top has a negative a11, a22x1. The next term will then be minus a12, a22x2. And don't forget the right side gets multiplied also, negative a22, b sub 1. All right, how about the next row? The next one then is a12, a21x sub 1 plus a12, a22x sub 2. And then on the other side, a12, b sub 2. Well, if there's any relief here, the second terms drop out, right? These middle terms here are both a12, a22x2 with different signs, so they go away. When I add those terms together here, I'm going to get a12, a21 minus a11, a22, x sub 1. When I add these terms here, I'll get a12, b2 minus a22, b1. So it doesn't look like a whole lot simplifies. On the other hand, it looks like I'm almost done solving this system because if I divide both sides by what's in that set of parentheses on the left side, don't I get x sub 1 equals a12b2 minus a22b1 over a12a21 minus a11a22? Now, rather than having to do this every time I want to solve a system, I wonder if it's a nicer way. What was my original matrix? The original coefficient matrix, had I written that original problem as a coefficient matrix, would have looked like this. A11, A12, A21, A22. Look at the determinant of this matrix. The determinant of matrix A is A11, A22 minus A12, A21. Hmm. Isn't this almost what I have up there, but not quite? So maybe it would be helpful if I took this and I multiplied numerator and denominator by negative 1. So let's multiply numerator and denominator by negative 1. Right? I can do that, and it doesn't change the value of the equation. So I get x sub 1 equals a22b1 minus a12b2. You realize multiplying by negative 1 basically switches the order of the subtraction. And down the bottom, the A11, A22 becomes positive. The A12, A21 becomes negative. Ah, well, now it matches that this is the determinant of matrix A. But what is this thing on top? Well, suppose I took a matrix, that coefficient matrix, and I replaced the first column with B1, B2. And I kept the second column as A12, A22. Now, isn't the determinant of this matrix, I don't know, let's call it a sub 1. Isn't the determinant of matrix a sub 1, a22b1 minus a12b2? Yeah, that's the top over here. So it turns out that x sub 1 is equal to the determinant of matrix a sub 1 divided by the determinant of matrix a where I form this matrix A sub 1 by knocking out the first column 
and replacing them with the b1, b2. I can actually do the same thing for x sub 2. I can create a second matrix where matrix a sub 2 keeps the a11 and the a21, and this time replaces the second column with b1, b2. And so x sub 2 will be the determinant of matrix A sub 2 over the determinant of matrix A. Of course, this assumes that the original coefficient matrix did not have a determinant of 0, because if that original matrix has a determinant of 0, then Kramer's rule doesn't work. So you're assuming that the determinant of matrix A is not equal to 0. If it is, then all bets are off. So that's why usually when you do these problems, you find the determinant of matrix A first, and then as long as it's not 0, then life goes on. Otherwise, problems done can't solve by Kramer's rule. So let's take a look at a 2 by 2 example. Suppose I've got x sub 1 minus 3x sub 2 is equal to 2, and 2x sub 1 plus x sub 2 is equal to 1. Well, first of all, my coefficient matrix A is 1, negative 3, 2, 1. The determinant of matrix A is going to be 1 times 1 minus negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. So the determinant of matrix A is 7. All right, we can solve this then by Kramer's rule. What is A sub 1? A sub 1 is replace the first column with the 2, 1, leave the negative 3, 1 right where it is. Matrix A sub 2 is leave the first column where it is. Replace the second column with the 2, 1. So now the determinant of matrix A sub 1 is going to be 2 times 1 minus a negative 3. So the determinant of A sub 1 is 5. The determinant of A sub 2 is 1 times 1 minus 2 times 2. The determinant of A sub 2 is negative 3. And now if you want the values, x sub 1 is the determinant of a1 over the determinant of a, so it's 5 sevenths. x sub 2 is the determinant of a2 over the ter determinant of a, so that gives me negative 3 over 7. Those are my two values. All right, if you want to go back and try them, 5 sevenths and negative 3 sevenths, I'll get what? I'm going to sneak them on the side here. 5 sevenths minus 3 times negative 3 over 7 gives me 5 sevenths plus 9 sevenths, which is 14 sevenths. 14 sevenths is 2. That should be what's on the other side of the equal sign. It is. Yep. And then I can do the same thing for the other one. 2 times 5 sevenths is 10 sevenths minus 3 sevenths is 7 sevenths which is 1. All right, so both of those work. And that's my solution using Kramer's rule. Take the determinant of each, divide by the determinant of the original coefficient matrix, and you're done. All right, let's take a look at a 3 by 3, although I'm going to sort of help this process along because I sat down and I found these determinants in advance because otherwise we've got to do them for each one of these. That's a little bit of a pain if you're going to do Kramer's rule by hand. So let's say I've got this example here. I've got x sub 1 plus 2x sub 3 is equal to 6. I've got negative 3x sub 1 plus 4x sub 2 plus 6x sub 3 is equal to 30. And I've got negative x sub 1 minus 2x sub 2 plus 3x sub 3 is equal to 8. So the first thing I'll do is I'll assemble my coefficient matrix. Sometimes half the battle is copying the numbers and the signs in the right spot. One, and then I need a zero in here, right? Because there is no x sub 2 coefficient. Well, I mean, there is one. It's zero. And then a 2. The next row goes negative 3, 4, 6. And then negative 1, negative 2, 3. I, I sat down and calculated the determinant of matrix A. It turns out the determinant of matrix A is 44. So that means I can continue with Kramer's rule. If the determinant was 0, then you can't use Kramer's rule. Let's form our other three matrices. 
a sub 1 is going to be replaced the first column with the three numbers at a right hand side. That's your b. So the 6, the 30, and the 8 go down the first column. Then I keep the 0, 4, negative 2, and the 2, 6, 3. Okay. Matrix A sub 2 is keep the first column, keep the 1, negative 3, negative 1. That second column now becomes 6, 30, and 8. And the third column remains 2, 6, and 3. Right. The third matrix keeps the first column, so 1, negative 3, negative 1, keeps the second column, 0, 4, negative 2. Now the third column becomes 6, 30, and 8. Right, so now I've got my three matrices. Like I said, I sat down before I started recording this video and calculated the determinants of each of them using, honestly, a calculator. So the first one has a determinant of negative 40. The second one has a determinant of 72. The third one has a determinant of 152. So really what I want to do is show you what happens now that you have all this information. How do you find those three values? Well, the x sub 1 becomes the determinant we just found over the determinant of the original. x sub 2 is the determinant of the matrix we found over the determinant of the original. And x sub 3 is the one we found over the determinant of the original. Do these things simplify? Sure. Turns out they all do. The x sub 1, if I take a 4 out of top and bottom, becomes negative 10 over 11. Take a 4 out of top and bottom here, and I get 18 over 11. Take a 4 out of top and bottom here, and I get 38 out of 11. So I can write my answer like this. There's my three values there. I can write a column matrix saying x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3 equals negative 10 over 11, 18 over 11, 38 over 11, or if I want, I can actually pull out the 1 over 11, right? Just leave the 1 over 11 on the outside times the matrix negative 10, 18, 38. Right? So those are my three solutions. I will leave it up to you to put those values back in to see if they actually work, but they do actually work. All right, we'll do one more video with the applications for areas.